Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to find out the effect to depth of the beam D, which is represented by D. How to find out the effect to depth of the beam? We always use this effect to depth in our design of the beam. That's why it's very important to know how we can find out the effect to depth for any beam cross section. It can also be find out for any slip cross section. So to find out the effect to depth, it is mostly represented by D. So effect to depth is equal to the depth of the beam, depth of beam minus concrete cover. This is a simple formula used to find out the effect to depth minus concrete cover of the beam minus the half of the diameter of bar that is used in the beam. So this is a simple formula to find out the effective depth of the beam. Now I will show that how we can find our depth, effective depth of the beam for this beam. The total depth of the beam, the height is 500 millimeter and there are, here is one, two, three, there are three flexures and the tension bars are used in the beam to take the tensile stresses and there are three numbers and 12 millimeter diameter. So this is the diameter of the bar which is 12 millimeter and the width of the beam is 300 millimeter. So to find out the effective depth for this beam, so it is equal to the depth of the beam which is 500 millimeter minus concrete cover. Now the concrete cover is the distance from the extreme edge of the beam to the steel bar. This distance is known as concrete cover and mostly in beams it is 25 millimeter, 30 millimeter, or maybe 35 millimeter, depends on different factors. And also depends on different codes, this concrete cover can be changed. But let's suppose that in, in our case, we take the concrete cover of the beam, 25 millimeter. So 25 millimeter is the concrete cover that we provide in this beam, and minus diameter of the bar divided by two. Now the bar used here is 12 millimeter diameter of the bar, so 12 millimeter divided by 2. So we will get the effective depth of the beam, which is the distance here we see here from this extreme top compression zone till to the mid of the steel bar. This is known as the D effective depth of the beam. So we all know, we know these values now. So if we subtract these values, 500 minus 25 minus 12 divided by 2, so we got here 469 millimeter. So we can write it here that our effective depth of the beam for this scenario is 469 millimeter with the concrete cover of 25 millimeter. So it depends on two things. One is the concrete cover and the other is diameter of the bar and also of course the depth of the beam which is the main factor. So in our design we use this effective depth. For example, if I want to write the design formula, so we write the area of the steel into Fy into D minus A by 2. This is the moment capacity of the beam. So here, if you look to the formula, we need the effective depth of the beam. That's why it's important to know how we can find the effective depth of the beam and what is this effective depth. Effective depth is basically the distance from the extreme top of the beam till to the mid of the steel bar. Or in another way, it is from here extreme, from this extreme till to the mid of the top bar. This is this can also be D, effective depth. So this was the overall topic today about the effective depth of the beam and hope you guys understand what I mean by effective depth and how we can find out the effective depth. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.